Huskies. Why waste any more time? Miami and Florida State ready to go. The Knolls have won 12 of their last 16 ACC openers. Miami has won three of their last five. We'll see who does this season as well. Florida State controls the opening tip. Tania Latson wasting no time, pushes the pace. Bajetti now working inside and off the window, scores the opening points for Florida State. Florida State likes to use the dribble penetration to get those points in the paint, as you saw there from Sarah Bajetti. On the other side, the turnaround jumper does everything but fall, and the tap out goes to KK Timpson. That was Lola Pendande on the shot attempt as Tania Latson charges down low and collects the foul. Tania Latson, the sixth time ACC freshman of the week leads the Knowles 25 points a game. Exceptional off the dribble. She has that attack mentality and is trying to get to the rim each and every possession for Florida State. The ACC record for freshman of the week honors is nine. It's been done twice. And for those keeping track, there have been six chances to win the ACC freshman of the week. Recognition, Latson has swept them all. Starts off with a couple of big free throws there for the Knowles. They jump out to the 4 nothing lead. 4 nothing lead for Brooke Wyckoff's squad. Here's Jalea Williams working at the top of the key, driving downhill, and the lay-in won't go. Out comes Massengill with the rebound. Aaron Howard off that terrific game against UConn, puts up the three ball, it is no good, a little strong, and Haley Cavender clears the board. Aaron Howard not afraid to launch it from long range. She leads the team in three-point attempts, and she is second in the league in three-point attempts. Nice high-low look down low to Pendande, and Miami's opening points are recorded. A minute and change into the game. Katie Meyer looking on, the longtime head coach of the Hurricanes in her 18th season, their all-time winningest women's basketball coach. Katie Meyer's done a fantastic job with this Miami Hurricanes program. Off to another great start here this season are the Canes. Area vets from the wing. Cavender there to pull down the loose ball rebound after the long miss from Ariovic. Florida State with a big block. They are one of the most aggressive teams defensively with those blocks. Second nationally, they average over seven blocks a game defensively for the Knolls. Tanaya Latson called for the foul on the floor. It remains Miami basketball now with a fresh 20. Mariana Valenzuela checks in. Nice strong screen that's set there by Destiny Harden trying to get Cavender open. Shot was blocked, but then they were able to get it inside and draw the foul on Latson. Jalea Williams with the inbounds pass gets it to Pendande, who tried to corral the miss and knocked it out of play. Of course, they got away with uh, a mistake there as Miami in really good position, just unable to finish. Bajetti with the extra pass down low, tried to find KK Timpson. Turnover, Miami comes back the other way with it. They lead the conference in steals, averaging 11 per game. Off that one, Harden, the jumper no good. Coast to coast, all Latson, no problem. Nia Latson so explosive with the ball in her hands. Another short range miss, Pendande on second effort does get it to go. She has all of Miami's four points. Pendande has been aggressive on the glass. Four offensive rebounds already for the Canes. Got 10 shot attempts already through the Miami Hurricanes. Two point game. Massengill's three around the rim and out. Here comes Ariavets back the other way. And 
Kylo look through the baseline. Yep. Pandande trying to get the ball inside there. The six foot guard, Destiny Harden, just a little bit too strong on the pass. As we take a look at head coach Brooke Wyckoff in her first official season after taking over for a long time, head coach Sue Semrau. After the interim year in which she manned the ship here in Tallahassee, went one and one. There's a three ball for Omaria Gordon. But going back to Wyckoff, never got a chance to play against Miami in the conference. The Hurricanes, when she played here at Florida State, were in the Big East at that time. On the other end, Haley Cavender rains down the three. Mariana Valenzuela. That has been what she has done routinely, making nearly 60% of her threes this season. Valenzuela, an outstanding stretch for her. Shoots at 58% from the three-point line for the Knowles this season. She had 17 in their win over Harvard down in the Cancun Challenge. Taking a look there at Haley Cavender making it rain from long range. And then Valenzuela with the answer on the other end for the Knowles. And Melissa, we were talking before the show started trying to figure out what the statistical threshold is in the ACC because in terms of three-point field goal percentage, that 58% leads the conference once she reaches the minimum attempt threshold. Long shot from Aria Vicks there, just a little too long. Nice job by KK Timpson on the denial and then the reach call, and I believe against Bendande. So we've seen KK Timpson do that a number of times this season where she's able to use that athleticism to reach around post players to swat that away, take another look at the steal. Timpson there comes up with it, and then Pendande with a hand on Timpson as she tried to dribble it up the floor herself. Pendande gonna catch a quick break. Gonna see another freshman, Lazaria Spearman, check in for the Hurricanes. Hannah Cavender also heading to the floor for Miami. So each of the Cavender twins checking in already for the Hurricanes. Tania Latson got the starting assignment and once again has made it count with yet another bucket, six points for Latson already. Again, you just see her ability to get to the rim quickly. Turnover there by Miami. Quick hands for Florida State. Live ball turnover is an absolute no-no against a team like Florida State. And in transition, there's Mariana Valenzuela with six points of her own. And the blink of an eye. Thank you very much, Kylie Brennan. And I believe, Melissa, what Kylie was going to enlighten us about was after talking with Katie Meyer earlier this week, Coach Meyer was talking about the analytics and what stood out when looking at Florida State. I'll tell you what stands out right now. Taylor O'Brien, first action after the first three games of the season going coast to coast. Collision down low, and Omaria Gordon hits the deck. It's good to see Taylor O'Brien back out in the lineup for Florida State. She's missed the last 10 games with that lower leg injury. Looked healthy on that play, missed the layup, but a good aggressive play on the defensive end from O'Brien. So to go back to what Kylie was intending to mention, um, Katie Meyer mentioned that when you look at Florida State and you scout the Seminoles, what stands out is that when you look at the Hakeem stat, which is when you look at an opponent and you see what their opponents have done against them, and you see how often their opponent's possessions have resulted in steals or blocks, you can get an idea of how many times the team you're about to play has forced live ball turnovers. The point Katie Meyer made to us earlier this week was Florida State has forced on their opponent's possessions to this point this season, 35% of the possessions have ended in a live ball turnover. And so far to that point in this game, three Miami turnovers, now four, and eight fast break points. Yeah, Florida State has done a good job of turning Miami over so far in this game. That's actually normally something Miami is very good at, so Katie Meyer knows that stat well. Her team forces 21 turnovers a game and actually leads the ACC in forced turnovers. 
Both teams can absolutely, as you mentioned, get after it on the defensive side of the floor. Florida State's had the edge early here with about four minutes left in the opening quarter. It's a good looking shot there for Jaleel Williams. A yeah, nice pull up mid range jumper there for Jaleel Williams. Miami gonna try to apply some full court pressure here. Florida State beats it. Here's another look for Mariana Valenzuela. Hannah Cavender tripped up down low. I believe they're going to call KK Timpson for it. Ah, no, they'll call Bajetti for it. Yeah, it was actually Bajetti that got her feet tangled up there with Cavender. Mariana Valenzuela just a little bit more on her. You saw that was her first miss of the game, but she is now 28 of her last 48 from the three-point line, so over 50% in her last three attempts. Freshman Snoop Turnage checks into the game at that last dead ball. Florida State continuing to try to apply pressure out on the perimeter, making it difficult for the Hurricanes. Lazarius Spearman also checking in for Miami. Another turnover by the Canes. Some good on-ball defense there from Sarah Bajetti, making it difficult for the Canes to find a driving lane. Foul in the paint as Bajetti slashed to the basket. That foul going to go on Lazaria Spearman. That's going to be her second. So foul trouble for the Miami Hurricanes here early, still in the first quarter. I'll tell you who also hit the floor for Miami for the first time this season. McDonald's All-American freshman Kyla Oldacre has checked in. Number 44 in green, working down low on Timpson and will be called for the foul. Yeah, I have not seen Oldacre all year long for the Hurricanes. I'm sure Katie Myers excited to see her All-American check into the game for the first time as a Kane. Two free throws for KK Timpson. Gibson on the season, just 62% from the free throw line. Averages about 12.9 points a game, about nine rebounds for the Knolls this season. Has exceeded 10 points per game to your point in 11 of the Knolls' 13 contests this season. Her season high a year ago was 13 points. She's equaled or exceeded that seven times in the 13 games this season. Love to see that development from freshman to sophomore year. KK Timpson has taken advantage of her time in Tallahassee in the summer and really expanded on her game so far this season. Tanaya Ladson working on Hannah Cavender and down low, Kyla Oldeker is going to be called for the foul. KK Timpson there working hard on the block, trying to get around Oldeker. I think there was a little bit uh, extra of an elbow there that official Jeffrey S Smith saw, and Older Girl will have to go right back out. There you see, couldn't get a good look there, but it looked like she maybe had her arm wrapped around KK Timpson, trying to hold her off from the pressure. Hot pass cross court to Tania Latson. She controls, and now Bajetti operates top of the key back to Latson. Nice move by Bajetti. A little too nice. I guess they're going to call her for the travel on that one. It looked like she had the step through move. Must have put an extra hop and a step in there. As Bajetti gets whistled. Let's take another look. One, two, three. That's a travel. Yeah, it's a travel. <laughs> it's a nice move, but Looks it's a good, travel. Though. Unless maybe you're playing in the, in the W. Ooh, Talk about move. a nice move. Wow. And Shane Dwyer with the little up and under hang time move. Get to the rim and finish for the Canes. Dwyer, a player that Katie Meyer describes as a real competitor, a player who's really dialed in and when she's focused and competing in the moment can be a really special athlete for the Hurricanes. A couple of years ago was the Tennessee Gatorade Player of the Year. Nice pass and find by Hannah Cavender. And laying it in is Carla Erlevitz. 
обстановка. Florida State, no field goals now over the last three minutes of play. And it's a turnover by Sarah Bajetti. We mentioned they're off to run in again. We mentioned that both of these teams turn opponents over at a relatively high clip. Hannah Cavender on the other end. Shot won't go. Final minute now of the first quarter. Good look for Bajetti. Yeah. Florida State stroking it from beyond the three-point line so far today. 50% for the Knowles on four of eight shooting. Area vets. There'll be about a 5.4 second differential between shot clock and game clock here at quarter number one. Nice pass there. Everybody paying attention to where Tanaya Latson is. They know she's the leading scorer on this Seminole squad. And a nice pass and a kick out to Bajetti for the three. Bajetti, a player who in her own right has scored 10 or more in seven of 13 games this season. Has started in the vast majority of Florida State's contest this season as well. Again, about a five second differential here between shot and game clock for the Seminoles. Latson on the drive, off the side of the backboard, and it looks like Harden will clear and collect the foul. Second foul on Tania Latson. Yeah, Lat Tania Latson fouled out of Florida State's loss at Connecticut, and that was one that uh, Tania Latson may want back later. Not worth making the contact there to come up with the foul. Maybe a little bit of frustration there as she wasn't able to finish at the limb. Taylor O'Brien checking back in with 5.4 seconds left here in the opening quarter. There's a turnover. Omaria Gordon trying to beat the buzzer, couldn't get the roll. And Timpson, despite collecting the offensive rebound, was not able to stick it back up before quarter number one comes to a close. But if you're wearing garnet and gold, it's the first quarter you can be pretty content with. Knowles lead by 11, 24-13 over their in-state foe, Miami, to open up ACC play. Interesting stuff. And yeah, surprise, surprise. Florida State players who have bought in and who know the value of defense, that's going to make Sue Semrau smile. That's going to make Coach Wyckoff smile whenever she hears that back later on here this afternoon. Yeah, you love to hear that from freshmen who understand that it's not just about scoring points. It's, it's about both ends of the floor. And when you hear the freshman Snoop Turnage and Tania Latson will talk about defense, that would make any coach proud. Florida State had the double team down low, Valencia Myers and Aaron Howard, but caught a piece of hurricane as well as basketball. So a couple of free throws upcoming for Julia Williams. And just a swat down by Valencia Myers, the 50 year senior. Shea Dwyer misses the first. 67% free throw shooter on the season. Thirty games last season for Lachey Dwyer, averaged right around 11 minutes a game. A player that Coach Meyer remarked preseason really was turning the corner right before ACC tournament, and then promptly got injured to start the ACC tournament. Came back in after a broken nose in the NCAA tournament. Played great against South Florida, but expected this uptick from Lachey late last season. She was trending that direction and then has come out and played some of her best basketball this year. And much like we talked about KK Timpson earlier making that transition from freshman to sophomore year, you can see such huge jumps in players' confidence uh, and in their skill set with that off-season work and the, and the experience that comes with that. Dwyer, for her own part, set a career-high 20 points against North Florida, equal to career-high in steals with eight against the Ospreys. Jazz Massengill with the mid-range J gets Florida State on the board here in quarter number two. 
Madison Gill sometimes quiet offensively for Florida State, but numbers say she's deadly from three-point range, shoots it nearly 50% from the three-point line. Nice pass down low by Cavender. Extra look out wide to area vets. Here's Gordon keeping it herself. Got a hand in there to knock it away. Pendande gets it up ahead to area vets. All alone got the roll. Has some miscommunication there in transition. Area vets just puts it on the floor and goes right to the rim. Knowles didn't communicate in transition defense and a good look to get the Canes on a little roll. Lead down to 10. It'll stay there. Nice offensive rebound by Valencia Myers. Ball knocked out of play by area vets. It remains with the Knowles. Now Mario Gordon there dove on the flo floor for the loose ball. She's normally the player that probably is back in transition. Nobody picks up the ball. Area Vitz recognizes it and just finishes with the left. Nineteen on the clock for Florida State. Myers wasn't ready for the pass initially, then puts up the shot too strong off the window. Bounce pass down low, too hot for Lola Pendande. Another turnover by Miami. Well defended that time by Valencia Myers. Got caught on that top side, but forced Pendande low enough on the block that there just wasn't a good passing angle to get it in. Another turnover by the Hurricanes, their eighth of the game. Pendande, one of seven players on this Miami roster with international basketball experience. And for her part, she played for Spain at various international levels, was actually named the star of the generation in the 2000s by the Spanish national team organization. So some high honors for Lola Pendande and Miami certainly right to try to establish her down low. Pendande, the second year transfer from the University of Utah. Jazz Massengill being assertive on the offensive end for Florida State here. Her second bucket of the game for the Knowles. Massengill at her third school, started at Tennessee, won an SEC title at Kentucky, playing well here in Tallahassee as well. Nice rebound there by Aaron Howard, tipped it to herself and then came up with it. Howard on the drive, got it to O'Brien. O'Brien, through contact, gets it up off the glass and will learn a trip to the free throw line. Take another look at Massengill here. Just uses her strength there to muscle it up to the rim over Jalea Williams. Foul called against Mulena Sidibaba, another one of those international players for the Hurricanes. Mentioned earlier that O'Brien returning after the first three games had an injury, has missed a chunk for the Seminoles but scored north of 10 in each of the first three games, scored 19 twice, and is in the scorer's column relatively early here in her return. Yeah, Taylor O'Brien in those three games averaged 16 points a game, shot over 46% from the floor. Knowles have missed her and are excited, I'm sure, to have her back in the lineup today to start ACC play. Williams, mid-range, strong. Speaking of strong, that's a strong rebound by Lola Pendante, who will earn a trip to the free throw line. Valencia Myers thought she got all ball on that one. My Forsberg saw it differently, saw the hand go down and swat Pendante. Seminoles had defended that well initially. Let's take another look. That's hard to tell. Got a lot of ball at first, but may have gotten some arm. Great players never think they foul, though, Sean, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter. Benande knocks it down. Came into this game shooting just north of 60% from the free throw line, has started every game since she became a Hurricane. That's now 46 straight starts for Pendande, was a Pac-12 all-freshman, as you mentioned, her career at Utah. 
Yeah, Benande, six points already, four rebounds for her. Great start for the senior. But Jenny working inside. Another big rebound there for Pernande off the Pajetti miss. Jalea Williams looking for some space, tried to bounce it down low, got tied up with O'Brien, and Dwyer comes away with it. Scrappy play by both teams there, but a good play for Miami to come up with it. Dwyer high off the glass, no good. And KK Timpson corrals the rebound. Dwyer was looking for the foul there. Oh, and then just picks the pocket of Sarah Pajetti. Wire, nice little shot fake there to get Snoop Turnage up in the air. Wait for it to come back down and then finishes. Dwyer now five points, seven minutes for the Canes. In addition to the great game against North Florida, Dwyer also 12 points, eight rebounds, a career high against Michigan, a team that went to the Elite Eight a season ago. C.D. Baba's laying attempt short. Pandande yet another rebound here in the first half. That is six offensive rebounds already for the Canes in this game. Most of those coming from Pandande. Another nifty move from Lachey Dwyer. Very crafty around the rim. And don't look now, but Miami is really starting to trim this lead. It was 11 at the end of the first quarter. Florida State has led by as many as 12 in this game. Timpson gets it back to double digits for the moment, but Miami has made some inroads here in quarter number two. They certainly have. They have come out shooting the ball well and forcing disruption on the defensive end. Wire again taking it right at Snoop Turnage. And Brooke Wyckoff has seen enough of Lachey's wire. And this Miami run, she calls. Dwyer. I'll touch on Dwyer here in a second, but first the scouting report for Miami. 10 players have recorded a game in double digit scoring figures. They're first in the conference in steals and tied for second in offensive rebounds per game. We have seen both of those early here in this game. Several steals and a number of offensive boards, really for Lola Pendande in particular and the rest of Miami as well. Yeah, Pendande has definitely been a difference maker. Jalea Williams now getting in on the action. But Just, P Pendande with 6.6 .6 rebounds in her 11 minutes for Miami so far in this game. Jalea Williams certainly has the potential to be a difference maker, as does Jazz Massengill. There's another big rebound by the Hurricanes. Cavender. Roberts, the turnaround jumper, is good. But just to quickly go back to Lachey Dwyer, one of the stats I always like to keep an eye on is the plus minus. When a team is playing you, your plus minus is relative to when you're on the floor. Miami is plus four with Dwyer on the floor. Yeah, they're playing really well right now on a 6-0 run and a 12-2 run over the last three minutes and 33 seconds. Chasing down all the loose rebounds, all the momentum right now with Miami. It's gonna be a travel on CD Baba. Miami has outscored Florida State here in this quarter, 15 to eight. Knowles have got to find an answer with Tania Latson on the bench with those two personal fouls. And Lachey Dwyer is also on the bench for Miami. So can this rotation keep up the momentum? So far, so good. Gordon from the wing, buries it. Maria Gordon is a great answer for Florida State. She has played well for the Knowles as of late. Two big threes already for Gordon in this game. Stops the Miami run. Turnaround, no good. Rebound goes to Taylor O'Brien. Gordon with the look down low. KK Timpson, her fellow sophomore on the baseline, short. Cavender off and running. 
Roberts. Foul called on the floor. Yeah, Don't go against KK Timps. KK Timpson battling it again with Pendande, who has been a force on the boards for the Canes. Haley Cavender also making her presence felt on the glass. Has just three points in this game, but has six big rebounds for Miami early on in this game as they are out rebounding Florida State 23 to 13 on the glass. There's a big block from Florida State. And to your point about Cavender, she's led Miami in rebounding twice this season. Cavender twins well regarded for their shooting ability coming out of Fresno State. In fact, Katie Meyer mentioned one of the things that excited her most was they needed shot makers over the postseason and over the offseason. They felt like they got them in the twins, but they have also done a lot in a variety of ways for the Hurricanes, stuffing the stat sheets, especially Haley. Right on cue, Haley Cavender with the nice look in transition, the pull-up jumper. Lead down to five. With more on Haley Cavender, here's Kylie Brennan. Thanks, Sean. Speaking with Coach Meyer about ha Haley Cavender's ability to electrify the offense when she's on the hardwood going in this matchup, she said it's all about who you play, where you play, and what shape your team is at at that time, and her most competitive players are going to play most of her minutes from here on out. Thank you very much, Kylie. There's a three for Destiny Harden. Destiny Harden, the leading scorer on this Miami Hurricane team, had been shut out up until now, but a big shot for Destiny Harden as the Canes continue to cut into the Seminole lead. And I'll make the leap on the back end of Kylie's hit. If your most competitive players are gonna play the most minutes, surprise, surprise, Haley Cavender has played the most minutes of any Hurricane this season. That's a big answer for the Seminoles and Aaron Howard who hits the three. Looks like Miami will now hold for one last shot. No surprise that the ball's in the hands of Haley Cavender. 10 left. Cavender gets it back to Dwyer. Dwyer's been the hot hand this quarter. That one's short. Nearly tracked down the offensive rebound, but it caroms out of play, and the Knolls get it with seven tenths of a tick left on the clock. Gordon with the heat. And that is how the half will come to a close. Quarter one to Florida State, quarter two to the Canes. What a start to ACC basketball. Uh, In-state rivalry games always bring out the best in both of these two teams, and I think you're seeing that here so far in this game. Made it pretty clear. We're working on some things. We've had some time to work on some things, but if I have to beg my team to get up and be fired up and play committed basketball in this game, I've got bigger problems than I thought. Yeah, and they, they, she has not had to do that so far. I feel like this has been a very inspired effort by both teams in this rivalry series. And here comes pressure straight away from Miami on defense. But if you can pass out of the press, there should be somebody open. In this case, it was KK Timpson down low. Really good awareness there from Sarah Bajetti. Split the defense and was able to find KK Timpson underneath. And then there, Tania Latson coming over and help side alters the shot. What a start for Florida State to open the second half. A good look down low for Timpson and a three from the wing for Tania Latson. Nia Latson had to spend a lot of the first half on the bench with those two fouls coming out on fire, trying to make things happen. On the way to the basket, Sarah Bajetti tied up. Take a look there, nice pass from Bajetti over to Timpson running the left wing, excuse me, to Latson running the left wing. Latson now with nine points to lead the Knolls. Good work by Destiny Harden who tied up Bajetti. It'll be Miami basketball. And here comes Ariavets into the half court. Jaleah Williams. Williams a little too strong off the glass. Aaron Howard doing a nice job. Everything she could to keep Pendande from grabbing another offensive board. They're going to say it was last touched by a player in green. Yeah, Williams nearly got back her own miss and knocked it 
across the baseline. To your point about Pendande, four offensive rebounds for Pendande alone in the first half. Massengill will shoot a couple free throws. We've seen today Jazz Massengill be much more aggressive in looking for her shot. She's got six shot attempts. She does have those four points to go along with her two assists. A chance to add to that point total here from the line after she was fouled by Area Vic. Massengill hasn't shot a ton of free throws to this point this season. Came into the matchup shooting 10, had made five. We'll look to split the pair here as well. Runs all the way around, but Aaron Howard there to clean it up. Get the Snowballs another possession. The Jetty collapses the defense, gets it back out to Massengill. Latson somehow knifed her way through defenders and will earn a trip to the free throw line herself. Not sure how Latson split those hurricane defenders, but she was able to split the first line of defense, get deep into the paint. Pendande had no choice but to come over and challenge the shot and make contact. Take another look there. Pendande definitely got her money's worth on that foul. Made sure that Latson wasn't going to finish. Two fouls now on Pendande. So all three of the post players for Miami now, Spearman, Oldeker, and Pendande, all with two personal fouls. Tanaya Latson leads the ACC and is one of the nation leaders in free throws made. That puts her in double digits for now all 14 games to start the season for Florida State. She has scored 20 or more in 12 of the first 13. Pretty good look for Destiny Harden. Did everything but fall. Now here comes Latson back the other way. No look pass. Howard working on Harden. And will get Harden off her feet. And Harden will be uh, called for the foul there. Harden doing everything she could to cut off the baseline drive there from Aaron Howard. She's got their feet tangled up and she gets whistled for her first personal foul. Timpson off the inbound pass was rejected by Pendande at Karam's out of play, Miami basketball. Canes can get Haley Cavender on track. She's been quiet, just five points, does have those six rebounds. Love to see them try to get an easy bucket for her. Nice pass to Hart. And that'll be a couple of free throws for Destiny. Destiny Harden also been fairly quiet. She's the leading scorer coming into this game for this Hurricane team. Nice pass out of the trap from Cavender. Call that foul on Jazz Massengill of the Seminoles. It's Harden will go to the free throw line. Harden, a player who was named to the 2022 ACC All Tournament team, and for good reason. If you watch that game against Louisville, scored the last 15 points of the game, including a buzzer beater to knock off the Cards in the quarterfinals. Got Miami. Moving further in the ACC tournament, likely punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament. She's been the leading scorer over the last two years for the Hurricanes, and this year has scored 10 or more in eight of the first 11 games for the Canes. Yeah, Katie Meyer needs a big bucket. She knows she can go to Destiny Harden and count on her to get one. Seminoles trying to get it inside to Timpson there. She's surrounded by Hurricane defenders, including Lazaria Spearman, who knocks it out of bounds. Massengill with the right hand. Good execution on the inbounds play, but Massengill just can't get it to fall. Two of seven from the floor for Jazz Massengill so far today. Harden nearly lost the handle, got it back. Now it's back up top to Dwyer. Another good look 
to Dwyer. Excuse me, to uh, Harden down low. She gets it back up top to Kavanaugh. Another opportunity for Miami off another offensive rebound. Harden cashes in. Look how Destiny Harden starting to heat up. She hit that big three late in the second quarter. It's another big one there for the Canes. Harden, a player who began her career at West Virginia. Katie Meyer told me just yesterday she has to remind herself that she hasn't been with the Canes this entire time throughout her career. Julia Williams lays it in in transition and Brooke Wyckoff will call timeout. 7-0 run for the Canes over the last minute and 12 seconds here in Tallahassee. Five of those points have come from Destiny Harden. Five of her eight points, of course, over the last minute and 12 seconds. And just to go back to the story I was telling, when Brooke Wyckoff had seen enough and cut things off there for a second, we took the time out with the Knowles, is that Katie Meyer said she's always felt a strong connection to Destiny Harden. She's a team first kid, tough, a joy to watch, and a joy to coach. In fact, she really got her first taste of Destiny Harden back in an AAU game in North Carolina in 2016 when Harden made a shot in overtime to win the game. So that's been a long connection between Harden and Meyer. It's led to this marriage in Coral Gables and she has inspired this run in quarter number three for the Canes. Yeah, that was a big steal there from Lachey Dwyer in the backcourt. Forced the foul from Amori at Gordon. Let's take another look. He just swipes the pocket of Gordon. Takes it strong to the rim, Gordon with the body contact before she blocked the shot up top. Double digits for Lachey Dwyer. And now a one possession game here with 6.30 left in the third quarter. Florida State had done a good job in the first half of handling the Miami pressure. Need to continue that here. Can't afford the turnovers that lead directly to points as those two did. Pachetti on the baseline drive. Short. Harden nearly lost the handle. Out of play. Here's Julia Williams with a good look down low. Spearman will shoot a couple free throws. And Miami now that 9-0 run over the last two minutes or so. Spearman with a chance to do that nifty pass there from Jalea Williams to try to create the scoring opportunity for the freshman Spearman. Spearman on the season a 69% free throw shooter. She averages about eight points a game. Has not scored yet in this game. Again, picked up those two quick fouls in four minutes early in the first half. Spearman's been a tremendous pickup for Miami. A fantastic freshman to be sure. It's a Miami team, the way they operate, where everyone at some point in time, Katie Meyer told me yesterday, has either had to check up or check down a position. And so Spearman herself, they brought her into Coral Gables, looked to develop her as a swing type player. But as the season's gone along, partially due to injury, partially due to need outside of injury, they've actually had her playing some at the five. Yeah, the 64 freshman currently playing the five and defending the five right now as she battles inside with KK Timpson. Something she's done quite well. This time Sarah Bajetti gets downhill and gets the kiss off the glass. That stops the 9-0 run for the Hurricanes. This is a long two, and it is too strong by Haley Cavan. A.K. Timpson going to bring the ball up the core, just taking the length of the floor right at Spearman. Well, all right then. Lead back to seven for the Seminoles. Here's Lachey Dwyer trying to break it down off the dribble. Oh. See who that goes on on the Seminoles. Take another look at K.K. Timpson. Makes the little inside out dribble. Finishes at the rim. Here's the block. It's all clean up top from K.K. Timpson. But Taylor O'Brien gets a piece of the head of Lachey Dwyer and it will send Dwyer back to the free throw line. It's three of four on the afternoon so far. 
Good looking free throw there by Lachey Dwyer, who made one of her prior two attempts. Dwyer now 13 points to lead the Canes and to lead all scorers here this afternoon. Timpson. Timpson now with 12 points. A chance to build on that. A little extra English for KK Timpson, who's really leading the Seminoles effectively here in quarter number three. Them are of the Are You Kidding Me variety by KK Timpson, who's assembling quite the afternoon. Yeah, you didn't see there, she took it the length of the floor on her own after the rebound and finished at the rim. And there, with a nice little spin move through the contact, step up to the line here as we come back from the break. You've seen the growth of KK Timpson. There's where she stands in the ACC among the best so far this season in a number of statistical categories. The seriously impressive numbers by KK Timpson. We've mentioned the progression you like to see into that sophomore year. And I'll tell you what, Destiny Harden's really progressing well here in quarter number three. Pretty quiet first half for number three in green, but she has come alive to keep Miami in it here in the second half. 11 points already for Destiny Harden again. Eight of those coming here in this quarter. Come on, KK Timpson. It is the KK Timpson show right now for Florida State. Might be the Destiny Harden show for Miami on the heat check. That one no good. On the money, but strong. Sarah Bajetti with the spin move into the half court. Wide open look, Valenzuela. Can't have that if you're Miami. Valenzuela has been money from the perimeter all season. And today, several threes for Valenzuela against the Canes. That's three of four from the three-point line now for Mariana Valenzuela. That's going to be a double dribble on Destiny Harden. She kind of caught the ball in one hand. Let's take another look here at KK Timpson. She catches the ball in the low block. Nice spin move through some contact again for Timpson. And then Bajetti, some dribble penetration, draws all the defense. Mariana Valenzuela makes some pay. Tanaya Latson won't get it across in time. The pass by Omaria Gordon to Latson, air mill in her head. And so the lead is 10, but it is Miami basketball here. Miami doing what they do best. They create chaos on the defensive end. They force turnovers again. They force 21 turnovers a game. They lead the ACC in that statistical category as well as steals per game with 11. That one won't go down as a steal, but it will be a forced turnover after the 10 second backcourt violation. Dwyer to Cavender. Now set the screen for Haley. Haley with the right hand, off balance, puts it up. Condande with another offensive rebound. Cavan wide open from the corner. Count it. Another offensive rebound by the Canes, making the Knowles pay. And here comes the pressure. Dwyer all over Bajetti, getting the ball up and across. It's the fifth year senior, Jazz Maskey, will now be called on to handle the pressure in the backcourt. Games like this, you need some experienced veterans like Massengill. Miami brought the double team on Lats and Valenzuela called for the travel. Nice kick out there from Harden again on the offensive board. It is 12 offensive boards for Miami and 14 second chance points for the Hurricanes. I believe that's the seventh rebound for Lola Pandande. Cavender hits the deck. Williams from the free throw line had it blocked by Latson. Everybody hitting the deck. Dwyer driving baseline. <laughs> well, 
a little chippy out there now. This is a rivalry game, and you can see it on both sides. Maybe a little bit of extra talk and people snatching the ball uh, on the turnovers on both sides. And officials doing a nice job there by Forsberg talking to the both sides. Settle down, everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> you mentioned chaos, chaos and chippiness in full effect. As we approach the end of the third quarter, still 2-19, nice move by Majetti, got Dwyer off her feet. Knowles try to swing it, Massengill up top. KK Tipson working hard on the low block to see if the Knowles can get her another touch. Tipson, my goodness, 17.7 rebounds. Those three rebounds away from what would be a sixth double-double of the season and her career. Tipson on the all-freshman team last year in the ACC. She's got her sights set on bigger things like ACC team this year. She certainly has all ACC type numbers as we start conference play. Cavender working on Bajetti, trying to fight through Sarah, gets her off, and wow. makes that mid-range jumper. Look at Haley Cavender. What a play. The transfer from the Midwest Conference. She knows a thing or two about this rivalry. It was a nice move from Cavender, finishing through some contact. Still with the presence of mind to knock down the big shot for the Canes. Massengill, turnaround, off the glass, it's good. Again, the veteran like Massengill is going to be needed for Florida State today. Dwyer got back around, misses Julia Williams from the wing. And those loose balls in the offensive rebounds all seem to be going to the Miami Hurricanes right now. Lead back down to six. Dwyer nearly came away with the steal and will be called for the foul. Once again, chippiness really starting to show. Dwyer did not get off of Sarah Bajetti, did not give her room to step up, and a technical has been called. I believe technicals were called on both sides. Sarah Bajetti trying to get this crowd fired up. But I think officials pointed both ways. I believe both Dwyer and Bajetti gonna pick up technical fouls here. Take another look, a lot of contact being allowed. Dwyer with the reach in, gets called for the foul, but Jenny says something, Dwyer doesn't like it. And the two continue to jaw back and forth again. There's a reason they call it a rivalry game. And I'll tell you what, a lot of these players are youngsters who are really getting their first couple of tastes of this rivalry and transfers who didn't originally play in this rivalry game. They understand it and they are feeling every bit of it. So this will be two free throws for Sarah Bajetti, and then I believe the ball goes back to the point of interruption, so that will not be an extra possession for either team. It just goes uh, as the personal foul on Dwyer, and then the technical foul on Dwyer. So that is now three fouls for her. Sarah Bajetti at the line. Bajetti will go to the free throw line for two. Jetty on the season, 74% free throw shooter from the line. Katie Meyer gonna take out Lachey Dwyer. And Melissa, I mentioned how a lot of these players are getting their first few tastes of this rivalry. Tania Latson's one of those players. And with more on what she had to say about the Canes and the Knolls, here's Kylie Brennan. Thanks, Sean. Janiah Latson told me, being from Miami, she's playing with an extra chip on her shoulder because she wants to go into that holiday break with bragging rights, with a win over the U, in her words. Thank you very much, Kylie. That is going to be a hard task. Destiny Harden with another field goal make here in quarter number three. Florida State can hold for the final shot with the lead at six. It was good recognition by the freshman, Tania Latson. I think she wanted to attack and try to get to the rim. Teammate Taylor O'Brien, the veteran, saying, hey, hold up, we can get one shot here. Kavner got a hand in there. Turnaround jumper is short. Here comes Haley, and she will run out of time. Wow. 
Welcome to ACC play. Welcome to rivalry basketball. After a third quarter full of runs, the lead is six for the Knolls. Asking you to take on Leonard Hamilton's Florida State Seminoles. Knolls are playing a better brand of basketball here of late and have given some really good teams a tough time. Purdue was in a tight game here in Tallahassee. They're the number one team in the country, and Florida State played Virginia real tough up in Charlottesville as well. Would be remiss if I didn't mention that Virginia went on the road to Coral Gables last night and lost to Miami's men's team. A big win for the Miami's for Miami's men's basketball team in a top 25 matchup. Tania Latson lays it in for the opening points of the fourth quarter here in this matchup. Tania Latson well below her season average, just 11 points before that made field goal. We've seen her this season though, getting it done on the defensive end and that's exactly what happened there. No easy free backs. Knowles put pressure on the Canes in the backcourt and come up with the steal in the layup. Speaking of steals and turnovers, Florida State had four in the first half, had six in the third quarter. So Miami has really also turned up the intensity. That's going to be a block for Pendande. And there's another live ball turnover forced by the Canes. Cavender off the glass. A nifty move and a good shot. And back the other way, Taylor O'Brien knocks down the three. Speaking of good shots, Taylor O'Brien there, left wide open right in front of the Seminole bench in transition. Again, she's missed the last 10 games, but starting to get her feet under her here in this one. Tania Latson over in help side. Miami trying to post up the smaller O'Brien. Latson comes over to help her teammate out. Florida State has made nine of 14 threes here in this game. North of 60%. And Jazz Massengill will be called for the offensive foul. Massengill with the wraparound. She was being bodied up that time by Jaleah Williams, but officials have let that kind of contact go all game. But then Massengill with the wraparound. She gets whistled for a foul. That will be just her second. Right now, nobody on Florida State with more than two. Dwyer and Spearman with three for the Canes if you're keeping track of the fouls. Here's Destiny Hart working down low. High kiss off the glass, it is too strong. And there's another rebound for KK Timpson. Timpson now nearing that double-double, has 17 points to lead all scorers, but has eight rebounds now as well. Lost the handle, did Latson. Here's KK Timpson corralling it. Ooh. Then had that ball knocked away by Pendande. Those two have gone back and forth at each other down low all game long. Cavender gets it back out to Harden. A three ball from Harden. She cashes it in. Destiny Harden now 16 points. Four of six shooting from beyond the three-point line for the senior. Only two threes in the first half for Miami. They've made five in the past quarter and couple minutes of this fourth. The Jetty will earn a trip to the free throw line. Take a look here, KK Timpson trying to get to the rim, the strip by Pendande, and then Cavender gets into the paint, the closeout just a little short. Destiny Harden says, look at this. Jetty goes back to the free throw line. She's made a couple already for the Knowles. Nine points now for Bajetti. Five assists as well in her 21 minutes of action. Coming into this matchup, second most free throw attempts of anybody on the team aside from Tania Latson. So gets herself in there and has scored points in a variety of ways, not the least of which being from the free throw line where she makes both to extend the lead back to eight for the Knowles. Hart working on Howard, lost the handle out of play. It's good defense by Aaron Howard there. Only guarding more of a post player, but doing a nice job off the dribble. Forcing that turnover by Destiny Harden. You see 
Howard not going for those fakes from Destiny Harden, and then she just loses the handle as she tries to cross it over. It's like Harden maybe has a little bit of a scratch, gonna need some attention to stop some bleeding. What a training staff of Miami gonna... Florida State with the eight point lead, trying to establish Sunshine State supremacy over their major foes. And they're gonna need to get a sub here for Destiny Harden. They're not able to get the bleeding stopped enough. It looks like it's something that they can quickly patch up, but they do have to get a sub. She only has a certain amount of time. So Jasmine Roberts, 5'10", sophomore from Jacksonville, gonna check in for Harden. So again, Florida State having beaten the Florida Gators here in Tallahassee, the only loss on the season for Florida. Now looking to also beat Miami. Miami had just played Florida for the first time since 2010 in the WNIT. About nine days ago, and it went to overtime, Florida getting the best of the Canes down in Coral Gables. It's an overtime battle down there in Coral Gables. Back-to-back -back turnovers there. First by Bajetti, then by Cavender. Bajetti takes it the length of the floor to score it for the Knowles. Welcome to double figure, Sarah Bajetti. And speaking of double figures, the Knowles lead is re-extended to 10. Destiny Harden, though, was able to check back in at that last dead ball. Look for the Canes to try to get her another touch. Timeout on the floor with the lead at 10 for Florida State. 6-13 left in regulation. The Knowles trying to stretch the lead back out. Sarah Bacchetti getting it done coast to coast in transition. Each of these teams and pretty daunting for both. For Miami, most obviously, you got three top 10 teams on the horizon. Benefit of that being they're all in Coral Gables. For Florida State, you've got the one ranked matchup at North Carolina, but you've got three on the road, which presents a unique challenge in and of itself. Yeah, it's a battle every night in the ACC and uh, no easy ones for either team coming up in this stretch. North Carolina losing yesterday to Michigan. The Michigan Wolverines off to a good start this season off the Elite Eight run a season ago. Also with the win over Miami a few weeks ago. Here's Tania Latson working inside. There is the offensive rebound and put back by KK Timpson. Now one board away from a sixth double-double of the season. Cavender for three. Harden with an offensive rebound. Miami has just been eating up the glass here in this game. One of the best in the conference coming in and certainly proving as much here in this game. Yeah, they're out rebounding Florida State by 10. It's 36-26 on the glass, but 15 offensive rebounds for the Canes have gotten them 17 second chance points. Most paramount for Miami right now is putting an end to this 6-0 run for the Knowles over the last couple of minutes. Good high-low look. Pendande looking for space. KK Timpson says no way. That space closed up in a hurry. Skip pass over to Howard. Latson now breaking it down. Off the dribble, lays it up, and will earn a trip to the free throw line. Tania Latson passed up the look at an open three to put her head down and get right to the rim, but it started on the defensive end. KK Timpson with the big block of Pendande. Then there you saw the little shot fake from Latson, and then uses her body to draw that contact on Pendande, her fourth. Send Latson back to the free throw line. Again, she's an 81% free throw shooter on the season. It's gotten there more than anybody on this team and more than anybody in the league, I believe. Has gotten to the free throw line about as much as anybody in the country. In fact, one of the top five in the NCAA. In fact, came into this matchup second in the NCAA in free throws attempted and made. Knocks down two for the Knowles there. Dwyer, out to Hart. Good look for Hart. 
Another offensive rebound. Spearman couldn't get it to go. Jazz Massengill there doing a nice job on the weak side to force the block out. Pichetti fouled on the way in. Just the third foul by Miami. It'll be called on the floor. Miami in the half court has had trouble over the last two minutes and 30 seconds. Florida State on an 8-0 run. Miami's been at their best when they've been able to get those steals and the stops defensively and run in transition. As of late, they've had to play in the half court where they're not as efficient. Valencia Myers set to check in for Florida State as they appear to be working on a clock issue. Katie Meyer wants to come over and ask for some explanation. KK Timpson going to get a nice round of applause here from the hometown crowd. I don't think we've probably seen the last of her. Nice look off the inbounds pass, Valencia Myers. I believe you heard Valencia yelling, come on, after the lay-in attempt. That was a good look and good execution by number 32 in white. Yes, the only fifth-year senior on this Florida State team that has been here all four years and she and understands this rivalry matchup. Here's Dwyer, and she has been a lot of fun to watch. A couple of free throws upcoming for Dwyer. Take a look on the inbounds play there. Valencia Myers with the strong basket cut. It's the open layup. Good look from Jazz Massengill on the inbounds. And back on the other end, Massengill picks up the foul. To send Dwyer back to the free throw line. Five of six from the line today is Dwyer. Dwyer scored in double figures four times last season as a freshman. Came into this matchup having done so four times already this season. So now a fifth time as she now has, I believe, 15 points in this game after both free throw makes. Well, Dwyer had to play behind two talented guards in Miami and Mikea Gray, Kelsey Marshall. Maybe didn't get quite as many minutes last year, but she definitely learned some things and has shown it this season. Latson with a burst of speed all the way down to the other end of the floor. She'll go back to the free throw line. Spearman will be called for the foul. Spearman has had trouble staying on the floor in this game. For Miami has only been able to play six minutes, has picked up now her fourth personal foul. Really hasn't been able to be as impactful as I know she would like. And Tania Latson, you mentioned impactful. She has certainly been plenty impactful to this point this season as we take a look at the nation's top two scores. Caitlin Clark at Iowa and of course Tania Latson here at Florida State. The number is just mutually unreal for both. Yeah, Tania Latson should be talked about more nationally for what she's doing here so far on this Florida State team. Those numbers speak for themselves. And again, we talked about her winning freshman of the week multiple times. She's also won player of the week several times and it's probably gonna be in the running again this week for that honor. Another offensive rebound for Miami. Oldeker checks in and was fouled. Latson will be called for it. Latson thought she had all ball there as Oldeker Caught it away from the basket. Latson must have got a piece of the arm as well. She does have those three personal fouls now. Oldeker looking for space, and the youngster is on the board for the first time in her Division I career. There is a steal and a lay-in by Destiny Harden. Here comes the pressure. Florida State beats it. Here's Aaron Howard with the pass out to Massengill. Job by a couple of seniors there. As they pulled the ball back out. Take a look at this bucket by Oldeker. Using her body and her size to get around Valencia Myers. That foul on Dwyer on the last possession. Putting the ball pressure again on Bajetti. That has been a matchup. And it's been physical all afternoon long. That's now four fouls on Dwyer. Jetty will go back to the line. 
To go back to your point, Melissa, about Tania Latson and the amount of respect, the amount of attention that she's received, I would even echo that for the entire Florida State team. 11-2 coming into this matchup, playing UConn tight up at Mohegan Sun, which, let's be clear, it's a neutral site game, but it might as well be Storrs Jr. <laughs> and so you play UConn tight up there, an inspired second half. I would have thought that would have been good for more than not receiving any votes in the AP poll. You cannot tell me there are 25 teams plus all those teams receiving votes that are all better than this Florida State squad. Uh, yeah, I would agree with you, Sean, and I think this Florida State team will have to go on the road and knock off one of these ranked ACC opponents before they truly get the respect that they deserve. Nice look. Timpson lays it in easily. Nice find by Tania Latson. She can do a little bit of everything. She can score the basketball. She can facilitate it as well. Yeah, six assists for Latson to go along with her 17 points. Crab one of the travel on Harden. Dwyer step back and one. Dwyer just put her shoulder right into the midsection of Jazz Massengill. Take another look here first at the KK Timpson. No look pass from Tanaya Latson for KK Timpson. And then Dwyer just kind of putting a shoulder right into Massengill. Massengill gets whistled for her fourth personal foul. Jazz Massengill now over at the top of your screen, pleading her case with official Jeffrey Smith. Want to know what she's got to do. Well, I can tell you what <laughs> Lachey Dwyer might be about to do. Don't look now, but if she makes this free throw, that's 18 points, career high 20 against North Florida, and she's within a field goal of equaling or exceeding them. Yeah, she has been fantastic today for Katie Meyer and her young Hurricane squad. Timpson down low, off the pick and roll. That's one way to break the pressure is look for the post player in the paint on the backside. Good pass from Aaron Howard over the top. 23 points for KK Timpson. That equals her career high. Just doing it all. It's a big clock from KK Timpson. Another nice pass, an extra pass to the corner. Here's a three ball, too strong. And there's the double double for KK Timpson as she wrestles down what should be rebound number 10. KK Timpson was laying on the floor on the opposite side. First, let's take a look at the bucket on the previous possession, but she was on the ground on the last possession, sprinted all the way down the floor, grabbed the loose ball rebound. Big block there from KK Timpson. Here you see her on the ground. She hustles all the way down and grabs the offensive board to get the Knowles an extra possession. The career high 23 points for Timpson was something she set in the opener against Bethune-Cookman. So two minutes left for Timpson to tack onto a double-double and set a new career high. Good look for Dwyer. There's a new career high for Lachey. Dwyer has been fantastic for the Canes, and there she forces a turnover. Tania Latson looking for the foul, but officials have been pretty consistent. They have let that body contact go most of the game. I'll go back to a point that we made early in the show. We talked about the sophomores and the growth from year one to year two. And wouldn't you know, it has been KK Timpson and Lachey Dwyer who have really put on a master class for either side in this massive matchup. Yeah, two super sophomores have come to play today. Dwyer now just trying to take things into her own hand, and she takes it right at the seven holes. And not only have they both really done a tremendous job today, they now both have 23 points for their efforts in this game. I think there was an inadvertent whistle there. I think they thought Katie Meyer was trying to call a timeout. Officials stopped it, but that's a bad break for Florida State as now it gets a chance for Miami to set up their full court pressure defense. And here it comes. Dwyer on Bajetti. And here she is. She got in there to tie it up. And Sarah Bajetti's got to know not to drive that deep without anywhere to go. You know this Miami Hurricane defense is swarming. That'll be a turnover on Florida State. It's their 15th after the steal from Dwyer. Minute and a half left to play, and once again, Miami is on a run. They've made six of their last seven. 
Dwyer has been largely responsible. Harden, top of the key. An acrobatic attempt for yet another offensive rebound. It does go to Florida State, however. Sean, I'll tell you what, if I'm in a white jersey right now, I need to know where Dwyer is. She's got the hot hand as of late, but you better know where Destiny Harden is as well. She has made some big shots over the course of her career, has 18 points here today. Right now, Knowles just need to get it over and take care of it on the offensive end to get a shot attempt. Latson tearing it up downhill. Count the bucket. And I believe this is actually going to be an offensive foul. Did he wave it off? It yeah, was a little he bit did. confusing. He did. Wow. Let's take another look. Latson gets downhill, gets into the paint. Wow. I'm not sure that she got her feet set there. Looked like Dwyer might still be moving a little. Was set up outside the restricted area. That's going to be fo four fouls now on Tanaya Latson. Miami with an opportunity. The ruling on the court is an offensive foul. The play is on a review for the restricted area. Oh, yeah. I think you could hear that uh, official review going to occur here. They're going to take a look and see if both feet got established outside the restricted area. Looked like on our first take, Sean, that I think it did. And they can't go back and change block charge. Only the restricted area is the only thing they can look yep. at at this one. can't determine whether or not she was set. That's irrelevant at this point. I'll concur with you that I don't think there's any doubt that her feet are outside of the restricted area. Ooh. They certainly are. But that right foot is by no means set. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that it looks like from our angle that she established her defensive guarding position. She did establish both feet outside. I'd say I think she looks like she was still moving, but again, that, that's not something that uh, that can be changed at this point. So I think that call's gonna stand. It's gonna be Miami basketball. After they Following finish the review, the review. The ruling on the court stands. The defensive player is completely outside the restricted area. <laughs> It'll be Miami ball. All right, no further commentary needed. I think we broke it down and then we got the clarification. If you are Katie Meyer, you've had a chance to draw something up. What look are you trying to generate here? I think you got to get the ball in the hands of Lachey Dwyer. She has been your go-to player here in this game. 23 points. See if she can get some dribble penetration, get to the rim, draw the contact, maybe get the three that way. Don't count out Haley Cavender either, though. She has been quiet today, but we know she can stroke it. Well, Cavender has it now as she brings it across into the half court. One minute left in regulation here at the Tucker Center. Florida State, a 2-3 zone here, mixing things up a little bit. Latson got in there and, sort of, and deflected it back into the backcourt. Miami retains possession. Dwyer nearly lost the handle and traveled. Good move by head coach Brooke Wyckoff. Switched it up, played a little bit of zone defense, made Miami have to execute something other than probably what Katie Meyer drew up in the huddle. Nearly forced the turnover and then did, in fact, force the turnover in the half court. Yeah, Dwyer took the extra step trying to get in the middle of that zone. And it becomes Florida State basketball, and Miami's got to consider playing the foul game here. Latson brings it across, keeps it herself, and that could be the final nail in Miami's coffin. It'll be a timeout now. Katie Meyer wants to advance the basketball. Big play, though, from Tanaya Latson. Gets the ball in her hand and just takes it the length of the floor. Has to play through a little bit of contact. I thought that could have been a whistle there on Williams. Instead, Latson just takes it coast to coast, right over Pendande with the finish. Take another look from the other angle. Nice crossover there on the right sideline. And crosses back over to the right hand to finish over Pendande. Tania Latson has scored 20 or more points in every Seminole contest except one this season. Her career low, Sean, is 19 points, which she has matched now today. Pretty impressive for the first 13 games of the season. You said it, I'm not gonna disagree with you. Not gonna disagree with you at all. And I think you can certainly imagine that 
whatever happens here with Miami, they're going to be inclined to foul off the inbounds, and Florida State would be wise to try to get the ball to Tania Latson on the inbounds play. That's the exact person they would want to have shooting free throws if it comes down to it. Miami doesn't have a whole lot of time here. Hard down low, lays it in. It'll be Latson to send it in, and Timpson is fouled by Hard. Probably not exactly who the Florida State Seminoles were trying to get the ball to, although KK Timpson has been fantastic. Statistically, though, you had put uh, Taylor O'Brien in the game, and Latson, I think, made a little bit of a mistake there by being the one to take it out. I don't think that's the way that it would have been drawn up, but again, sometimes in the moment, freshmen just get so excited, they just want to make things happen. I think that's what you saw there, but again, Noles got the ball in, they get a free throw shooter at the line. Timpson has been good so far today. Made all three prior, and with this four for four showing from the free throw line, this was a new career high for KK Timpson. 24 points against the Miami Hurricanes. Looking to make it 25, it'd be a nine point lead for the Noles if she does, and she does. She looked confident with those free throws there, so. Proven me wrong, K.K. Timpson with a huge afternoon to lead the Knowles. Julia Williams gets it down low to Cavender. Cavender, turn around, got it off the glass. This time, Latson does corral the inbounds and will be fouled. Executed exactly the way the Knowles wanted to that time. Jazz Massengill going to be the one to throw it in, and you're trying exactly to get the ball in the hands of statistically one of your best free throw shooters, Tania Latson. Again, O'Brien actually does lead the team in percentage at 87%, but a much smaller sample size for O'Brien. She's only knocked down seven of eight. We'll go ahead and take a look at the ACC preseason poll. Louisville, Virginia Tech, NC State, Notre Dame all receiving first place votes. North Carolina, the number five team, also checked into the preseason top 25 and is ranked up in the top 10 currently. Miami was a fringe top 25 team to start the year and was receiving quite a bit of love. And I think we've seen that after a nine day layoff, they've had a chance to really work on some things and Miami's going to be a pretty darn good team here in conference play, but I think what everybody's starting to learn now is that Florida State, who was the unknown commodity to start the year, is certainly a pretty darn good team as well. I think people are going to have to start to take notice of these Florida State Seminoles as it appears that they will move to 12-2 and and 1-0 in the ACC. But make no mistake, Katie Myers' team has competed hard today and will be a force in the ACC as well. Another 20-point game now for Tania Latson. 13 of the 14 games she's played in as a Seminole. That last foul on Miami was on Lachey Dwyer. That was her fifth, so she is no longer in the game for that reason. Three ball off the mark. Another offensive rebound this time by Cavan. Williams fouled on the way in. Got a whistle Sarah Bajetti on that reach in as Williams trying to get into the paint. Jenny and help side, trying to reach in to swat it away, but got a piece of the arm as well. Oh, yeah. Julia Williams at the line. She's had a nice afternoon as well. Now 10 points, seven rebounds, four assists. For Williams, the sophomore from Papano Beach. Playing more as the point guard for Miami. The Canes don't really have a set point guard. They kind of do it by committee. She will look for a strong season this year, but Florida State certainly building one of their own. They beat Miami 92 to 85 to open up ACC play. Yeah, we got a great matchup here. This is exactly what I think the fans were hoping for here in Tallahassee as the Knowles will come away with the 92-85 win to open ACC play. These two teams will meet again later in the season 